Hey guys, Tim from Algonaut here. Okay, so today I'm gonna to go over some tips and tricks and some use cases for using Atlas and making the most of it in your projects. We've designed Atlas to be really simple and streamlined to use, but at the same time it can be quite powerful and there are probably a few things you might not be aware it can do. Firstly, I'll also mention that if you do ever get stuck, we do have a help page on the website which has some useful information about Atlas such as where your map files are stored, how to set up Atlas with specific hardware, and so on. So that's a good resource to be aware of. All right, so browsing the map, some tips and tricks. Okay, so if you zoom into the map somewhere and you get a bit lost, like this, and you're not quite sure where you are, you can double click in the blank space and it will zoom you back out so you can see all the samples at once. That's quite handy. Um, as well as that, if you zoom in somewhere and you're clicking a sample and you wanna know where that sample is, there is actually a little icon down here with a little eye on it that will zoom you to that sample in the map. So I'll click that now and that's where that sample is. So I could now see the samples around that that sound similar. So I'll zoom back out again. Another thing that might happen is if you have zoomed in on a really big map that has a lot of samples, you might find there's actually not much blank space to drag the map around. So if you hold down Alt, you can actually click on anything, including samples, and it will drag the map without triggering or selecting a sample. So that's quite handy. I'll just really quickly touch on the whole like, dislike, heat map thing again as well. So any sample you find in the map, um, in the map or in your kit, you can like or dislike it. So let's say I find this picture, I'm gonna like it, and this one as well. Um, you might be wondering what's going on there. And up here in the top, there's a few icons for various things. And the first one is show the like, dislike heat map. So if I show this, you can see what I've done is I've actually liked these two samples and they've gone green. And also the ones around it have kind of gone a bit green as well. So if I like those, let's say I like a few more. And then over here, I'll dislike a few. You can see these ones are going red. So what this basically does is it feeds information into new kit. So when I now go new kit, it will prioritize samples that are green and not ones that are red. So over time, as you like and dislike a bunch of samples in your map, it will start to sort of learn um, what you like and what you don't like. You can clear this, of course, just by clicking this little icon here and it will reset and you're back to the start again. You can also delete samples directly from the map. So you can't with this welcome map, but if we go back to one of my maps, say this one, and say I don't like that sample for some reason, you can click this little button here, gives you a prompt and you can remove it from the map. All right, the drum kit. Okay, so when you first load Atlas, what you'll see down the bottom is a drum kit, and it has eight slots. And these contain the samples which you're gonna to use to be triggered by MIDI when you're loading Atlas as a plugin. But don't forget that we've actually got different layouts for Atlas that match your drum hardware. So if you go down, go down to this little drop box here, I can pop this open and I can select a two by eight view, a four by four view, which is more like say machine, an eight by eight view, which is more for say Ableton push, and even a launch pad view, which is directly laid out to match user mode one on a launch pad. So that might come in handy. So let's go back to say the two by eight view. Okay, so let's talk about the new kit button, which is this button over here. So what the new kit button does is it replaces every sample in the drum kit with another sample of the same category. So you can see in the bottom left slot, we've got kick, then we've got snare, clap, and hat. If I hit new kit, you get another kick, snare, clap and hat and that's quite unique to atlas and that only happens because we actually know because of the ai what every sample is in the map and these layouts can be changed so if you go to this little hamburger icon you can see the default is the one that we've created which is basically one of each sample type and these directly match our midi clips so if you're going to use our midi clips it's best to keep this on default and then all the patterns line up with the right samples but we've got a few other ones so the next one is native so if i put this into four by four view and hit new kit now with native selected. This layout matches more the average of say what machine kits tend to be laid out as. So you've got two kicks, your snare and your hats over here in the bottom right corner. So that will feel more comfortable, comfortable for machine users. The next one down is finger drummer. So this is a popular layout that we've taken from the internet where a lot of users tend to create a sort of mirrored um, kit. So you can see we've got kick, kick, snare, snare, hat and hat. So if you're finger drumming, this might feel more natural to you. And then we've got general MIDI, which is quite special. 
So what general MIDI does is it actually does a bit more than just changes the layout. It actually changes the MIDI notes that each slot um, are triggered by. It forces it into a MIDI note spec so that it directly matches general MIDI clips. So now what I can do, let's say I set it to 8x8 and go new kit. I've got a general MIDI kit. And if I go over to my downloads, I've downloaded a pack, a whole bunch of MIDI drums. You can download these from the internet and there's heaps of them and most of, them, most of the time they're free. So let's just say I drag some of these into Ableton. I'll drag in two, one with a ride and come back over here. So I've got this clip, which is just a regular pattern, as you can see down the bottom. And if I now hit new kit a few times and then hit play, I've got a drum kit going. I can hit new kit again. And you get a whole new drum loop. Let's try the other MIDI clip. Maybe not so good, I'll try new kit again. Not too bad, that's kind of cool. So yeah, the point here is that there are a wealth of MIDI, of general MIDI drum kit loops online that you can get pretty much for free. And if you pair those with the power of Atlas with using your own maps and your own samples and the whole new kit button concept, you've got an unlimited supply of drum loops that are completely unique to you. So that's quite cool. Okay, so one of the things people ask us quite often is how do I make my own drum kit layouts? And it's actually really easy because remember that new kit replaces the samples with other samples of the same category. So all you need to do is just load the kit with a layout that you like. So if I go say, the second one's currently a snare, but if I load another kick drum, and then the next three slots are clap, hi-hat, close, hi-hat, open. So let's say I want a three closed hi-hats. I can just go hat, hat, hat. And now if I hit new kit, I'm gonna get two new kicks and three new hats. So that's cool. And then if you wanna save that, you can just save it as a kit. So if I go up to drum kits, I'm gonna save this drum kit as Tim's layout. So let's say it was empty. If I loaded up Tim's layout, we've got two kicks, three hats. I can come back here, just hit new kit, and I've got a layout that I like. So that's handy. So new kit becomes quite powerful when you combine that with patterns in your door. So if I load a pattern, say this MIDI clip here, a house loop into Ableton, which is just a basic house pattern, kick, hat, clap. If I spam new kit a few times and then hit the clip, you basically get an instant drum track. Or in some cases, you've got a few other sounds in there. It's almost like a whole song. And then you can just hit new kit and change out all the samples and you get a brand new song. And this is pretty cool as well because you can just you can lock in sounds or replace certain sounds to so say this pick is a bit weak i'm just going to cycle that out that's a pretty good one i'll lock that in place it's a bit of a weird clap so i'll change that sure and i can just new kit the rest nah. that's pretty cool so there you go, as you can see really quickly, you can generate drum tracks and loops um, in just a few clicks. And that's the power of the new kit function alongside with MIDI clips. Okay, so let's quickly talk about the setting screen because there's a few things in there that are quite interesting. So we pop that open. At the top, you get your defaults. So here you can change your layout and your new kit configuration and so on. So say I was a machine user, I can set this to say four by four layout keep it on C1, change this to native. And so now every time I come back to, to Atlas, it'll be set up in the way, ready to go with my machine. This next section called MIDI map functions is a bit interesting as well. So what we've got here is you can actually control certain things on the Atlas UI just using your MIDI keyboard or drum controller by just sending it MIDI notes. So say for example, we'll do new kit. So say I set this to C3 by just typing it in. If I then go back to the main screen, I can then just hit C3 on my MIDI keyboard and it will change out the whole kit. So that's pretty cool, because once you've got a loop going, I can just control it with one button on my MIDI keyboard, which makes things really fast for coming up with kits 
and keeping your hand off the mouse and really useful for people who are using um, drum controllers so they can kind of not look at their laptop and can kind of set it all up in the drum controller and come up with kits or performances just using their hardware. Okay, so let's talk about using Atlas in your project because there's different ways of using Atlas and depending on your workflow, you might choose one way or another. So we'll start with the obvious and that's just using a full kit with a full MIDI clip. So we'll go new kit, generate a kit, do it a few times maybe, and we're gonna get a MIDI clip. We'll just choose techno and you can use ours or you can use your own. And let's hit play and see what we got. Maybe. That's pretty cool. Try and put it in. All right, I'm into that. Okay, cool, it's a vibe. So that's cool, but the problem is if I wanted to add some effects to just one of those sounds, all the sounds are being output out the same channel that Atlas is on, because there's only one channel. So we need to split them up. And that's where actually, we've actually made that really easy. So what you can do is you can select any slot and you can open up the external out settings. And so for each slot, you can send each the audio out a dedicated channel, or you can just hit sequential. And what that will do is it will set each slot to a different channel. So you can see kick is on channel one, if we're just looking down here in the bottom right, snare is on channel two, that's on channel three and so on. So that's cool, because now we can only hear the kick, can't hear anything else, because the other sounds have nowhere to go. So we need to make some channels in Ableton. So I'm gonna make some audio channels, I'll just do four or five. Um, select them all audio from if, if you're not seeing this section by the way you just pop it up and using this little um, yellow icon down here audio from Atlas and you have to set the channels so I'm just gonna select one channel and I'm gonna go channel 2 channel 3 channel 4 5 6 so we've got basically and the kick stays on channel 1 which is the original channel Atlas was on so we hit play now still can't hear anything because I forgot one thing you have to also select the audio channels and set the monitor to in. And there we go. So you can't hear the other sounds because they've got nowhere to go, but at least with the first six sounds are going out dedicated channels, as you can see. And that's cool because now we can go to say this thing. We can solo it. Take an echo on it. vibes. So that's cool. That's one way of working with Atlas by splitting out channels and putting effects on each one. Okay, another way you might use Atlas is just using dedicated instances of Atlas on each channel. This can be handy because it keeps things separated nicely in terms of MIDI clips and also your audio output routing and stuff um, for when you're arranging a song. So I'm just going to use this instance of Atlas to find my kick drum. So let's say I dig around. That's a good enough kick drum. We'll put this in the first slot. Go over to a MIDI clip, kind of punch in, we're working on C, C1 is the root note, so I'll just do this, one, two, three, four, label this kick. Okay, that's the kick drum going. I'm going to duplicate that channel, label this clap, let's have a look at that MIDI clip, we just want the two and the four, let's get rid of the other ones, pop over to Atlas, obviously don't want a kick there, we want a clap. That'll do. Play the scene. I'll just do it one more time. We'll get a hat. Or a shaker even. Shaker. Make a new clip. C1. Duplicate that. Maybe I'll even chuck a few extra ghost notes in there. That'll do. Go into Atlas for that channel. Shaker, where are you? Down the bottom. That sounds good. Okay. So there you go. Now you've got a dedicated, basically Atlas has become a sampler, um, a typical sampler, and you've got one instance on each channel with a dedicated MIDI clip and a dedicated channel for output routing. So I can chuck, say, a delay or a still reverb even on that shaker. And the cool thing now is, of course, is now that the kick is routed at a separate channel, we can just side chain that to anything we want. So we'll just chuck on, um, I'll just do it using good old Nicky Romero kick. Start. Sounds good to 
me. Vibes. So that's cool. So now I've got my fundamental drums done using Atlas on dedicated channels. Um, so I have full control over them. But say now I want to add a drum loop underneath my fundamental drums to give it like a groove or a shuffle or that, that, those kinds of words. And typically you might go to say a Vengeance House Pack, a Vengeance Pack and get a drum loop and put that underneath your drums and filter it in such a way so it's not conflicting but just adding some sort of texture. And Atlas is a good resource for kind of coming up with your own drum loops as you've seen to do that yourself. So let's do that. So let's go new channel. I've got my, as we've already heard, I've got my basic as drum loop. Sounds fine. Just turn that down a little bit. Um, we're going to get a new instance of Atlas. Let's say we choose the same map, Vengeance Deep House. New kit. I'll get a, another clip. I might just choose a, not hip hop. What are we doing? House 3. Maybe I'll solo this so I can hear what's going on. It's actually not too bad, but I will try a few others. New kit. That's a bit much. That's cool. Alright, let's commit to that. Then I'm going to go and get a EQ. I'm just going to cut out the lows. I'm going to probably shelve down the highs as well. I was using it before. Just so it doesn't conflict with my fundamental drums. some real short reverb on it. Okay, so that's like a groove loop. This is like any loop you might find in the Vengeance pack. I might even saturate it a bit as well. Yeah, it sounds as good as anything you might find in a drum pack made real quick using Atlas. So if I turn my if I unsolo it and hear everything together. Start it back a little bit so it's just sitting in the background. Here's my drum track. Easy. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tips and tricks video on Atlas and maybe you learned something new. If you have any tricks of your own, feel free to add them to the comments below. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.